Well, I carried a paper route in Grenada from the junior high, the seventh grade through my senior year. And I did various things around the paper before I was taught to, to uh, operate the liner type machine. I did a melting down of the metal and pouring of the pigs that we used on the liner type. I helped fold the papers and uh, ironically in high school, in that I had a paper route, I did not have the opportunity of being uh, a member of the staff of the high school paper. But at Holmes Community College, I was business manager for the growl, the paper. And uh, uh, actually the school on, had only owned one uh, car. And if it was available, I used it to go to Lexington and Durant to sell ads. If it were not uh, available, then I would hitchhike. So, uh, you know, due to the uh, my association with the uh, Daily Sentinel Star there in Grenada as a paper boy and learning to operate a line of type, it just it seemed natural to go into journalism. But uh, I guess when I decided to go into journalism as far as a major, I never envisioned owning a paper. So uh, uh, I, I never had dreams of being a publisher. I just you know, was following, you know, kind of day by day, you know, what happened and trying to respond to that. God has been good to me and my family. When I came to Ole Miss my junior year, I had $800. That's all I had. And I got a tuition scholarship on the basis of my grades. Uh, started to work for the Eagle, the circulation manager for the Mississippian. And actually the university, a person that was dean of the School of Business at that time was a person by the name of Dean Horn. And they took my scholarship away because they said, you know, you're working all these jobs and we don't think you need it. But I said, I uh, appealed that and told them, I said, when the scholarship was given to me, there was no stipulation, you know, that I couldn't do other things, so they reinstated it. But uh, we've had, uh, you know, from the uh, being a partner here, third interest, we had half interest in the office supply, and then we opened in 1973 Jenny's Hallmark Shop on the square. So, and then we started, you know, looking for investments as far as commercial property and all, but uh, I give God all the credit for, you know, what our family has been blessed with. I think the, the overall goal has been, uh, you know, to enhance the economy, to make sure that we have uh, good public schools and that we have a regional medical center. And uh, I think all that we have been, that we try to do is, is pointing, you know, to one of those three entities. We've been here for over 140 years. And it doesn't mean that, you know, they're not good new products, but we have, during all that time of span, we have tried to put, put out the best product that we can. We enter the Mississippi Press Association competition each year. I think last year we won 26 awards, 11 of those were first place awards. We're competing with community newspapers our size like Greenwood, Corinth, uh, Brookhaven, Grenada, Clarksdale, those papers. So uh, that's, uh, it kind of helps us to know uh, when we receive that type of recognition that maybe we're achieving part of what we want to do from day to day. I was concerned from a standpoint of my part of ownership in the paper that we would accomplish this uh, successfully and without any uh, 
uh, strife on the part of the races. And uh, I remember that I met St. Peter's Episcopal Church, which is next door. I met with four other people and we just kind of brainstormed. And uh, two of those people, one that you know, Dr. Ed Meek, and uh, Dr. Mickey Smith. Mickey is retired from the uh, pharmaceutical pharmacy department. And myself, and then there were two other people who were deceased. One of the other persons was a black friend, uh, Willie B. Tankersley. But we kind of brainstormed as to what we might do uh, to try to lead the community in accomplishing this uh, going from uh, an integrated system into uh, one that was not. And I, I think you could, I've heard a, a number of people uh, from different sources probably uh, going from a segregated school to an integrated school, it probably was accomplished in Oxford or Fayette County, probably with as much ease and success as any uh, uh, district in the whole United States. So to have had a part in trying to lead our people during that crucial time, uh, from a standpoint of news stories, editorials, uh, I, I look at this as probably one of the, the most important things that we've, uh, issues that we've had to be a part of. And uh, uh, I'm thankful that my wife and I, we decided to keep our boys in public schools. And uh, uh, I think Oxford and Lafayette both are grade five schools, which is the highest, you know, in the state. So uh, it's, it's good to, and I think this is one of the reasons people like to come to Oxford, particularly if they have children, to know that there's a good public school system. We have a Christian school, Regents, and we have another private school, OUS, and they both do a good job, you know, with the program that they have. But uh, the public school systems in Oxford is excellent. And uh, we feel that we had just a, a small part in that. So I think we have to be aware of the technologies that are out there and we can't just keep our head in the sand and say, you know, we're always going to be there. I think you have to uh, be aware of uh, the technology. But the basic thing, I just hope that we will always do a complete job as far as this reporting events in our community and dealing with issues, you know, that we need to deal with.